This episode is sponsored by Free Market Kids. Hi everyone, welcome to Unchatter. Today you're listening to part four of my conversation with Toshi. Also, where I think Bitcoin can come in, right? Because of course, a lot of we have a lot of women who do not have bank accounts and who do not have access to getting a bank account. Now, Bitcoin can come in solving this problem. You know, with Bitcoin, they don't need to go get a bank account because they can easily, with the comfort of their home, comfort of their phones, make their transaction, receive money, send out money without having to necessarily get a bank, a bank account. And um, it's, it's, it's going to be a good plus for housewives and women in the rural areas who are still, who still have their finances controlled by the men in their lives. So yeah, and, 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 and then the good, the good thing here is Bitcoin has kept you know, advancing and there's been like good solutions in the Bitcoin space. Example, it's Machankura, right? Machankura was designed such that people in Africa who do not have access to the internet would not be left out on Bitcoin. So people in the rural areas who do not have bank accounts or who, you know, their banks is quite far from their location, they don't have to worry about getting a bank account or traveling a far distance to be able to go to the bank and get a bank account. But with their small phones, right, they can have their, make, make their Bitcoin transactions, receive money, through a short code, the USS is a short code using Machan Kura. Now, you don't need to have an internet access. You don't need to have a smartphone to be able to have a Bitcoin wallet or to be able to use or to send and receive Bitcoin. That's, that's the solution Machan Kura has introduced to the African space. And I think the more people know about Machan Kura, especially in the rural parts of Africa, the more people know about Machan Kura, the faster we get to the point of adoption where, because people would have have less need for fiat. People would have less need to go to the bank, and and I think this would be like a good, a good, a good point for you know mass adoption of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is going to carry everybody along. This is going to be like a huge financial inclusion for um women when it comes to finances. At this point, they don't need to declare their finances to their husband because of course they have their Bitcoin address and it's just to them. It's unique to them. So you know, it just helps them get in control of their money and you know, basically create that financial inclusion and financial freedom that women want in, in, in Africa. How do you see more women getting on board with Bitcoin affect Nigeria going forward? Like if you were to project out in your imagination 10, 20 years, let's say 20 years, and let's say we, you and I, and all the other women and other Bitcoiners are successful in onboarding many, many, many more women than we have today. How do you see that changing the state of things in Nigeria? Just in your imagination. Okay, so, you know, Nigerians are very entrepreneurial in spirit. You know, there are a lot of Nigerians I know who like to create things, who want to sell things. And, you know, like they say, the world is a global village, right? But then I tell people, how how much of a global village is this if people in Africa cannot easily and conveniently do business with people outside of Africa or even, you know, within Africa, but different countries, you know? But I think Bitcoin is going to solve that problem. It's going to make the world an actual global village because, you know, we can easily interact with ourselves and interact with our finances conveniently. Now, how is it going to affect the economy? It's simple. The more people, you know, get in business, start, start creating things, buying and selling, there would be a lot of the, 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 the amount or, or the level of export in Nigeria, for instance, would increase. Now, there's a lot of policies and there's a, there's a whole lot of discouraging factors limiting people from having cross-border transactions, a whole lot of like unfavorable export policies, unfavorable international transaction fees and all of that. So, but with Bitcoin in the space, it would be easier for me to sell my products outside of Nigeria and still receive payments. Now, the more money we are bringing into the Nigerian economy, the better the economy because you know once there's a good a good level of import and export it it sort of like helps with the balance of payments in in Nigeria and by extension it would make it will increase the standard of living and you know the GDP of Nigeria and all of that so I feel I think that there's going to be a, a significant change 
when Bitcoin is fully integrated into the payment system of Nigeria. But then, you know, there's still something about control. The government would also want to have like that sense of control about money and Bitcoin doesn't give them that control. So it's still going to be like, a um, you know, a bit of a huddle for the government and the people. But I believe that eventually with time, we would get to that point of hyper-Bitcoinization where the government would have no choice than to fully embrace this um, this technology. Yeah, that's such a great vision. And we we all strive to help bring the Bitcoin to that point, right? Do you have any suggestions for women who are sitting on the fence about Bitcoin and still unsure about participating? Okay, so I was speaking to someone who happens to be one of the founder and CEO of one of one of the big Bitcoin companies in Nigeria. And he said, you don't need to struggle so hard to convince people to see the potential of Bitcoin. We would always have a problem that Bitcoin can solve, right? So they should just be on the fence, but that's fine. There would definitely be a problem and that, that would make them see that, oh yeah, Bitcoin is actually the solution. And they themselves would come down from that fence and embrace Bitcoin. Because, you know, when there's a problem, you wouldn't need anybody to handhold you. You would stand up and go out there looking for a solution yourself. So, But I'll still say this, you know, Bitcoin has a potential to improve the standard of living that we have in Nigeria and, um, you know, better the economy. So if you are still on the fence, well, <laughs> you get there. We will get there. I love that. That is so true. Sometimes... You know, it's like when they're when I say when the stars are aligned, you'll be led toward the rabbit hole. We're just trying to light a path so that when the stars do align, they would just see it. Right. So, so true that when you have a problem, you have no choice. You you hop off the fence and you walk toward. It. And the more you learn about Bitcoin, the more excited you're going to get, just like every other Bitcoiner who has gone through that initial sort of transformation phase. You're like, what? This whole thing? Is available? What? <laughs> I just want to thank you so much for sharing your stories with us and your wisdom and your experiences. I think that it's so helpful for us to understand what different monetary systems in different stages are sort of forcing their their people to experience, right? So for the people who are outside Africa or outside Nigeria, it's so helpful to hear your story and understand from your point of view why Bitcoin is so important. So I want to thank you for coming on the show and, and sharing your experiences. Any last recommendations, resources you want people to go to? Anything to wrap up? Oh, yeah. What I usually tell people, and you know, especially people who are trying to get into the space, the first thing you need to do is get acquainted with people who are already in this space. You know, we have lots of them on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram. Just connect with them and just read their thoughts, listen to their thoughts and, you know, try to understand what they already know. And then gradually you'll find yourself getting more, getting into the space deeper. And the beautiful thing is I see that the Bitcoin community is like a big global family. Everybody is super supportive, really, really super supportive to 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 each other, to everybody in the in the Bitcoin space. So I would say that if you're trying to get into the space, you're trying to understand Bitcoin, just get into the community, listen to people, and before you know it, of course, you would always welcome you with an open open arms, and you feel welcome. And from there, you start you start learning, you start knowing about things, you start attending events and seminars, and from there, you know, you start your orange peeling journey. So thank you very much, Tali, for, for having me on the, on, the, on, the, on the stock. Thank you very much. Thank you, Toshi. Thanks for joining us today and learning with us today. If the discussion with our guests resonated with you and you would like to dive deeper into the world of Bitcoin, don't miss out on joining the Orange Hatter Women's Reading Club. The meetup link is in the show notes. Also, if there are women in your life whom you think would both enjoy and benefit from learning more about Bitcoin, please share Orange Chatter with them. Until next time, bye! This episode is sponsored by Free Market Kids.